What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and welcome to my gaming setup and studio tour for 2020. All right, so it's a new year, a new decade, and I figured it's time for a new setup video to show you what powers the channel behind the scenes. And in terms of layout, not too much has changed, but a lot of the gear and hardware has. So that's why I figured, you know, a new video for 2020 would be necessary. If you see anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below, so you can check it out if you're interested. And like we usually do, we'll make it like a, a hybrid of a vlog style and some fancy B-roll. But let's hop in and check it all out. Okay, so for this video, we'll go half vlog style, like I said, and we'll break it up into three portions, pretty much. So the main filming setup, which you see right here, which also includes the secondary uh, sort of desk setup station that has more so evolved into a set over the last year. This is the main thing that I focused on for 2019. And if you look at last year's video, this has changed a lot. So this will all be part one. Part two will be the goods and we'll get then into the primary desk setup and my main workstation. And then to end the video, we will talk about the more so entertainment center and entertainment space that is also pretty much just used for a set. I rarely hang out over here. It's mainly for it's when I'm filming stuff for uh, you know reviews and B-roll and stuff like that. So starting off, like I pretty much have had for the past few years, this is the main desk space. This is where you see me sitting. I will have my camera right here, which is the Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. That's what's filming my, you know, the A-roll, the talking head, which is also being fed into an 11 inch Lilliput monitor. So you can kind of see me down there. Hi. Uh, so that's how I could see myself. My mic is from Sennheiser. Don't remember the exact name and uh, actual model number for this. Again, I, it's gonna be tough to remember all the model numbers off the top of my head. So everything you see will be listed for you down below. Uh, but this has been, you know, the primary A-roll setup for filming uh, some Falcon Eye lights. And we'll just move over onto the secondary workstation, which like I said before, has mainly been a set for the past few months. The main purpose of building this space has been so I can have a secondary area to film and do things for, again, B-roll, product reviews, anything like that. It's a good little space to just film. It's more open than my main desk setup, and it gives me that freedom and flexibility. So for my desk, it's just a regular 48-inch matte black desk. Uh, the monitor is a 27-inch Ultra Gear from LG. It's their newer, well, new as in it was released late summer, but it's the Ultra Gear 27-inch. It's 2560 by 1440p. It is their one millisecond response time, 140 four hertz it is definitely one of the better gaming monitors i've tried so i got that in here for this desk setup and then that is on a one monitor riser this is from artifox in terms of my peripherals over here i have the razor huntsman tournament edition this is with their newer linear opto mechanical switches Next to that is the Model O. And as you can see, I have them kind of synced to this uh, light blue color lighting, which I think goes nicely with these red PBT keycaps I have on with it. And that is on my custom mouse pad that I collaborated with Novel Keys on. This is the topographic mouse pad. So a really nice custom design here. These unfortunately are no longer available. You guys missed out because I'm making this a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, custom pretty much collab for that. And then for audio, got the Sennheiser HD. 800s these are like these have always been like a personal holy grail to me uh, i picked these up recently the headphone stand is from grove made and then also for audio are my studio monitor speakers on each side these are from vanitu they're the transparent one encore i have them mounted on stands facing towards me and for the price they are some of the best speakers i have ever tried they are phenomenal they sound so good and that's pretty much like the main peripherals here i also have the jds labs l amp and l dac uh, for powering the hd 800s headphones and some other things i guess you probably want to know about the pc right this is a custom build that i just did recently this is the xbox one series x kind of mock build i did pretty much using like similar components, what we'd expect. And I wanted to get all that and build it in this small form factor like we would see on that. It's a really unique case, you know, it's called the Osmi. And uh, it definitely gives off a really cool look for this minimal ITX uh, PC. So that is pretty much the main stuff here. 
The chair is from Vertigear. It's one of their trigger series. And some other things around the room over here. Um, a shelf for some camera stuff, lenses, little uh, Eagles shrine pretty much. So they're letting me down this year. Got to hope for a nice playoff run. Some custom keyboards you've seen on the channel. And by the way, one of the newer additions also are these Aperture 120D Mark II lights. Uh, so since it gets dark at like 4.30 now, pretty much, it's harder to film down here. So I have one blasted over here. And as you can see, it's like completely blown out, which does emulate, you know, daylight. So I can film over here and have a controlled lighting. And then this one also is just shining up towards the ceiling. I do want to get these, get better stands and then replace these soft boxes I have over here. Uh, but that will probably come in the next, you know, month or so where I'll start to sort of upgrade these lights and transform that. But yeah, that is the secondary sort of workstation and filming spot. Now we could talk about the goods, the primary desk setup and workstation. All right, so the main changes that I made here from what you've seen in the 2019 version is I've upgraded the bottom two monitors, some new peripherals, and a brand new PC build. So starting off with these monitors, they're from LG. They're 3440 by 1440p. They have adaptive sync, so they can be used to enable free sync or G sync. 144 hertz, one millisecond response time. So they're a great ultra wide monitor for gaming. And once you try ultra wide monitors, it's really hard to go back. I've been hooked ever since. So I still have them in that same, you know, format and layout and stuff. And that overhead is just a really old Samsung. I believe it was probably from 2016 at this point, but since it's just an overhead monitor, there's no real need to upgrade that. Although I have been saying it for a while, maybe I will do a 49 inch so it's spanned more. I don't know, I've been thinking about it, but kind of hesitant because I kind of like this orientation here. I don't want that top to be too full, you know? I don't want it to be like it's all just one giant screen or else I just get a giant TV. So for peripherals, I'm still using the Corsair K95 Platinum RGB keyboard with their Cherry Speed switches. It's, you know, I, yes, I've built a lot of custom keyboards. And I've tried a lot of different ones, but just for me and my workflow, this works nice. I have those um, putting PBT keycaps on there so the RGB light shines through, gives a really unique look. I just have it on white right now to match the kind of winter themed wallpaper going on. You know, it's winter, so I got it kind of snowing and stuff up here. And again, it's got the macros and stuff, the multimedia keys, the RGB light bar on the back. For what it is, it works out just fine for me. But one of the newer upgrades has been the Razer Viper Ultimate. This came out, I guess in October at this point, and it is hands down the best gaming wireless mouse you can find on the market. It's lightweight, it's got crazy fast switches. It's just, it, it's completely changed the way I game. From using the G502 for how many years, the Viper Ultimate is hands down one of the best gaming peripherals I've ever tried. Uh, it also comes with their charging dock, as you can see there right next to the PC. It has these magnetic pogo pins. So you can just put it on there. It'll charge your mouse for you. And then next to that is like my smart home device, the Amazon Echo Spot. A nice, you know, kind of smart clock. Fits it nicely with the desk setup. And then also for my mouse pad, this is the Mad Cats Glide 38. And I know Mad Cats gets a bad rap because they've kind of made junk products over the years, but this mouse pad in, you know, conjunction with the Viper Ultimate is insane. It's this very unique, sort of like a hybrid rubberized texture that with like the mouse feet on the bottom of the mouse, it glides perfectly. It's like water resistant and it is just a killer combo with the mouse. So definitely love that in collaboration with my peripherals there. Uh, for audio, for my amp and DAC, I've been using this for a while as well. The Grace Design M9XX, and they power my headphones of choice, which are open back. The Sennheiser and Mastrop HD 58X Jubilee. I've been using these in the 6XX for the past few years, uh, but I just love open back headphones. And also, if you guys are interested in another pair of open back headphones, if you're on a budget, uh, hands down, one of the best recommendations I can just give you in general is the Philips SHP 9500. For the price of, I believe they're like at around $60 right now, they are literally some of the best open back headphones you can buy just in general. They sound phenomenal. They're definitely on par with headphones I've tried like $200 around that price range. So a killer value here. 
So those are my two go-tos for headphones. And then also for audio, my speakers. These are the Cantu YU5, have them mounted on each side of my monitors. I don't use them too much. It's more so just for like playing music and stuff while I'm filming in the studio. So I know when I'm sitting down, you, know, you want them to be ear level, ideally, uh, but I don't really use them for that. If I'm here, I'm using my headphones. This is just for playing music when I'm filming all around the setup, you know? As for the chair, I always forget to include this and talk about it, but it's the Herman Miller M-Body. I got this a few years ago at this point from an actual like retailer store. And since I was buying it in person, it was like half off, so I had to jump on that. And considering how much time I'm sitting here at my desk setup, it, whether I'm, you know, gaming or just editing, uh, it's definitely worth the price, hands down. A very comfortable ergonomic chair. And then we'll hop into the PC, which is the main upgrade for the setup. We just built this a little over a month ago, and I'm pretty happy with it overall. The case is from Fantex. It's the Fantex Enthu Evolve X. It's in the silver version and it has the built-in kind of like RGB lighting on the front, which gives it a really nice kind of accent glow in the background when you see it in my videos. I love that. And it's all synced to the rest of the RGB and uh, some of the hardware and stuff that I have in here. So inside the Intel i9-9900KS CPU, a Deep Cool Castle 360EX cooler. And as you can see, I have the custom Random Frank P logo there in the middle. Got 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. For the motherboard, I got the Asus Maximus 11 Formula motherboard, and it is custom plastic dipped in white to, again, fit in with the black and white theme I have for the hardware inside. GPU is Asus Strix RTX 2080 Ti, also custom spray painted in white. Well, they just came out with a white version, so I may replace that soon. And no, those are actually not RGB fans you see. There are fan frames, so they go on top of a fan, and then again, you can sync it with all the rest of the RGB lighting. I think it's a really, really nice piece to any gaming PC. These are also from Fantex. It's their uh, digital RGB fan frames. So I can sync those effects to my AIO and the front of the case, and it all just goes in unison. A really, really cool, and pretty much, you know, it's like under 20 bucks for these fan frames. So a really cool addition to your PC. I've also got the Sabrent Rocket Nano, which is a super, super tiny uh, one terabyte, pretty much NVMe SSD, but it is like an external hard drive pretty much. So I know you guys can't really tell by scale right there, but it is one of the smallest hard drives I've ever seen. And I have all my games backed up on here. So if I want to, you know, put them on a laptop that I just get in or I build a new PC, I can just, you know, put that over on the new PC and not have to download the games again. So it's blazing fast, all on there. And speaking of hard drive space and stuff, underneath is the Lassie Too Big. This is 16 terabytes. So pretty much what I do is I back up all of my videos, all of my video files and stuff onto here in case I need to reference them in the future again or use those video clips again for different videos. So definitely a lot of space. And I will mention it for everyone asking, although you probably know by now, uh, the desk setup itself is like the Ikea hack. So you use their Alex drawers as like the, the stand, you know, the base of the desk. And then I have their Carlby desktop in walnut. And it's actually a butcher's block or like a kitchen block used for countertops. So I have the 98 inch version and that is being, you know, kind of propped up and kept up by these furniture legs. I use those, I have them screwed into the Alex drawers themselves so it can prop up my desktop. So all together with the Carlby desktop and the Alex drawers, it just makes for a really cool desk that if you were to buy like completed somewhere, it would probably be close to like a thousand dollars. But here, much, much cheaper. If you have an Ikea by you, definitely check it out. Try to build it yourself. And you've definitely seen this more over the years, you know, this uh, desk hack is becoming a pretty popular thing. But yeah, that is pretty much the main desk setup. Some other things like the Random Frank P, the logo, illuminated, nice piece. Uh, some stuff over here in the little shelving unit. Another new addition, obviously from last year, is the 1 million subscriber plaque. We hit that last January, so pretty much almost a year ago at this point. Crazy, time's flying. And then we'll end it with the entertainment setup. So a 65 inch LG 4K OLED TV. I reviewed this, I believe in 2018, maybe 2017 at this point. Yeah, it might've been the end of 2017, but it is just super thin. It's like as thin as a smartphone. And with the OLED panel, you know, it is crazy nice in terms of color accuracy, deep blacks, vibrant colors. The picture on here looks stunning. 
And behind it, I have an actual RGB light strip, but it's addressable and it actually goes along to whatever is on your screen. So this is from Dream Screen. I've showed them off before. Um, I've used these for a while at this point, but it's really cool because it's essentially extending the colors that's on your screen. So if you're playing a game and stuff, there's explosions, it will reflect that behind the TV. Definitely a nice addition. I'm sure you guys don't care too much about the actual furniture and stuff, like the coffee table, but yeah, I kind of have it going to, you know, a, a sort of a, an aesthetic here with like the, the mountain pillows and stuff, the, the prints on the wall, some of the, the warm lighting with the, the gray wall. Uh, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about the actual entertainment center. Unfortunately, it's not available on Amazon anymore. Last time I checked, it just brought me to one of those, oops, couldn't find it pages. So yeah, I, I've been looking, can't find it. But over here, like I said, just for console gaming, watching some YouTube maybe, and primarily for filming, if I'm reviewing like a headset or something like that. This is where all the console gaming is done. I got my Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, PS4, some games and stuff, a little shelving unit. But uh, yeah, all together, you know, it's a pretty chill little spot. Not too much going on over there primarily for filming, which is kind of what everything down here is used for. Everything in this studio is for filming, except over here, you know, gaming, editing, primary channel stuff. But yeah, I think that about does it. All right, guys, so that'll wrap it up for my gaming setup and studio tour for 2020. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget, like I said numerous times, I'll have everything listed for you in the description down below. So you can check out all the gear and hardware that I use in my YouTube slash gaming slash everything office and studio. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.